I had the pleasure of speaking with uh, someone you might be aware of, uh, Sarah Snook. I, you may have heard of her once or twice. No. Uh, <laughs> and um, she, we, we talked a lot about, you know, the ins and outs of secession, but the one thing that we never got into really falls into your realm of expertise is just how visual the show is, okay? Mm-hmm. Just so many backgrounds, so many, I call it eye candy, if you will. Now, in your position, do you have to think about these episodes in a visual manner or do you map them out in the actual script as to where type of shot you're looking for? I mean, what's your process once you're given something to, like an episode to tackle, we'll say? Um, ooh, where to start? It's a lovely meaty question. Thanks, Dewey. Um, well, it starts with the script, obviously, and 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 in the writers' room, and 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 even before the writers' room started, Jesse and I are talking about, and my personal obsession is that that each each episode is eventized. Is that a word? Um, um, so that it has a it has its own specific visual look um it has its own world um and my favorite episodes are those that are that are contained within that world um which is sometimes more difficult to do it, obviously in new york and our kind of home base locations when we're at logan's or the way star you know local locations that we return to um but when we can get away whether it be to Italy or Croatia or to turn Haven in season two or to the birthday party in season three um those those tend to be my personal favorites because they have such a because we we create uh we're in the succession world but we're in a very you know specific now this week we've gone here uh, and that's the world for for this episode the the visuals of it we and we try obviously to reflect with as much authenticity as we can, the world that these billionaire characters inhabit, um, which um, which can be tricky because we have, you know, we're very generously supported by HBO, but um, but we don't have billions, um, so so we're trying to 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 be as close to that as we can with some wheeling and dealing to reflect that world. The trick the tricky thing is not to to try not to fetishize the wealth um, and and. We specifically try to do that by by trying to weaponize beauty um, it, by contrasting it with our characters' absolute obliviousness to their surroundings, so that we it's an element of having our cake and eating it, I suppose, as a director, in that we get the benefits of all that scope and beauty and grandeur, but we can also use it for our storytelling because we can see that our characters are. Uh, are utterly oblivious to it um and and in that that way we're able to yeah, to to continue the satirical thread of the series um in in terms of specific environments and specific shots that tends to be more emotionally driven there's almost an it's not quite an anti-aesthetic but it's a but you the aesthetic of the of the show visually with the camera craft is to capture to capture a moment emotionally not in a traditional or most often not in a traditional classic film structural frame um with the every now and then there's a huge and juicy exception you know the where where the moment calls for stillness uh, a, a case in point would be in all the bells say in the in the finale to season three when the three siblings come together uh, with the confession of Kendall's confession of being party to the to the death of uh, uh, of the waiter in, back in season one um that moment the stillness of that moment that uh, of, of of the three characters being most paralyzed in that moment um uh, uh, allowed for much more traditional structured and beautiful hopefully framing that um much of the time the kinetic energy uh, 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 and, and the rhythms of the writing and of the characters movements keeps a certain metronome of editing um that that is about capturing the moment and rhythmically um rather than specifically 
through classic framing. Um, so it's a very different, so the way that I prepare is not through storyboarding, uh, 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 it'll be through key moments, but it's much more to do with what is the emotional temperature, what is the rhythm, what is the musical rhythm uh, of a moment rather than what is the shot to capture it. That tends to evolve in an, in an oddly kind of free form jazz kind of way in performance. Is it possible to weaponize beauty after Brian Cox has once again said the word fuck off in a scene? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it just helps with the contrast. It's perfect juxtaposition. <laughs> Did you go to Georgia and uh, kind of give her a look like, what are you doing to me when you saw what she came up with for that birthday party script and just how yeah. difficult that was to shoot? Because people don't understand that it's yeah it was off the wall and yeah we talked about tiny wu-tang clan and that's always fun to say but mm -hmm. you've got so many ins and outs you've got the dance floor i mean yeah I putting know where to begin well initially we were going to put the bar the party upstate actually in massachusetts at a, a beautiful museum up there uh, uh, and use the grounds and, and that became financially tricky um so it was quite a late call to bring it back to hudson yards area um and uh the, the, all the credit for that episode apart from for the brilliance of the writing goes to steve carter our, our production designer and lorene scafario who directed that episode and did a, just a brilliant job of actually taking all those zones and working with Steve so closely and, and mapping out um, the whole free form flow of that episode between the location and the, and the limited location builds we did for some of the rooms. Um, and I thought they did just a brilliant job. And the, the concepts that the writers came up with, with uh, the, the, the birth room, um, uh, the, the indoor tree house, all, all of those concepts were just so wonderfully inventive and fun but also absolutely tragic and dark and it was such a beautiful kind of thick a thick kind of comedic but tra or tragic comedic uh blend which I, I think so captured the the place where kendall's character was for that episode and just to be clear before we go on to the next uh point to anybody watching this um we're not going to get into season four because the HBO police are watching me at this point. <laughs> and uh, basically the only thing I can say is that Mark Mylod is working on season four. That's it. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's where we're going to stay. So anybody who's watching this looking for um, season four spoilers, I'm sorry, we're going to hear to set, we're here to celebrate what Mark has done with his work in the past and what obviously we'll probably be celebrating the present because he's amazing at what he does. Now, now, I've set you up for a question, by the way. That was all set up because <laughs> this is going to be a tough one. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Who, who in the cast is the most difficult to shoot? <laughs> the most difficult to shoot. And you can interpret difficult in any way you can think of. Yeah, nobody's difficult to shoot. It's difficult to stop shooting them, really. Um, it's very difficult to shoot um, scenes between Matthew, who plays Tom, and Nick, who plays Greg, because um, it's very difficult not to laugh and spoil the take. Um, that's probably most often the most difficult issue. The two of them are terrible corpses as well. We shot a scene for season four a few weeks ago, which should have taken an hour and ended up taking about two hours because it was just unbearable. There was just no way we could get through a take without somebody in one point, And we were just shooting the whole thing in one long shot. And we almost got to the end, almost, almost. And then Matthew just broke down again. Um, when the two of them make eye contact with each other during a scene, it's just impossible. I try to stage things so that they can actually not look at each other because as soon as they do, uh, there's always trouble. So that is literally the most difficult. The, um, you know, a more serious answer to your question, it, 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 it is the, our, our, our actors are all Ferraris and they do all have this uh, incredibly different approaches, uh, 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 some more spontaneous, some more rehearsed. And um, uh, my job, the, the job of my fellow directors is to to set an environment where where everybody can find their way to actually get to the zenith of the scene uh, and that that is part of the craft of directing I hope and, and and a tremendous joy for me in terms of trying to set up 
environments that will trigger the best out of all the actors. Um, a case in point is uh, a scene that I think we're all, I hope we're all really proud of in, in All the Bells Say, that the, the season finale of episode three, uh, where Kendall, Jeremy's character, confesses to, to being part of the, the, the death of, uh, of, of the waiter in season one. Um, uh, and um, I know that Jeremy, for instance, is triggered by spontaneity, uh, uh, tri triggered in the moment, very much in the moment. Uh, so without telling him, um, we put into the scene at, at a certain point that a bunch of young men who didn't look dissimilar to, to that young waiter um, would come out to dump trash in the bins in the kind of backstage area of the wedding. Uh, and we put that in specifically to, to help trigger uh, uh, Jeremy's emotional reaction or try to help trigger Jeremy in, in there. And that's that's the, the, the big fun part of actually directing with such such incredibly incredibly kind of creative and smart actors in that actually it's fun to actually lay these little booby traps or support them in a way or find ways to actually just give them something else to riff off we will we will often do these or we'll always do um having got the script as uh, scripted we we will do these looser takes which we call freebies um where the gloves are off completely and both the cameras and the actors were because it's always a dance between those those people um can basically do whatever they like they can do exactly the same as we've been doing or or, or they can just go off uh, and just try things and certain members of our cast love that freedom and thrive on it and uh and we've got some really beautiful spontaneous moments out of it so so it's not a question of difficulty, it's a question of actually rising to the challenge of actually supporting brilliant writing and brilliant actors. I'm gonna guess someone who enjoys spontaneity might have the last name of Col Colkin. Um, <laughs> um, yes, do he does. <laughs> and I only got that information because Sarah, when I talked to Sarah, she said um, the, well, the most difficult scene partner for her was Kiernan because Kiernan tends to go off the reservation and says such uh, vile things it's hard not to keep serious in in that particular take now again take this any way you want i'm just going to give it to you the question interpret it as you will which shot from an episode you were the captain of the director however you want to frame it um do you wish you had back what well, um what wish i had back Maybe you would do it differently, or maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I, I tend to, um, in the way that actors learn lines when they've said the lines, and the and the scene is wrapped, it, it gets put mm -hmm. into the the trash bin. I'm the same with regrets. Um, not for moments saying that I don't have regrets. Um, most of my regrets we tend to snip out in the edit really um it's the benefit of overshooting the episodes you know so what, what our first our first go around in the in the edit will be you know an hour 20 sometimes or sometimes even more has been been significantly more on some episodes um the the massive benefit of that is you know the things that aren't strong including my bad choices we're able to uh, you know to snip out without without leaving the episode short duration wise. Um, I can't think of a gen, you know, as I will as soon as of course we finish this chat. Um, I can't think of specific things. I can think of moments that I'd like to recapture and enjoy more instead of just being um, a, a, a nervous wreck and trying to capture a moment before the sun goes down or before we just ran out of time. Um, but I try not to live in regret. There's just, uh, we just got to keep moving forward and just trying to up the ante from the previous season. Which shot have you seen the, fi the final product or, or the final framing, if you will, uh, where you were like, that's it. That's the one. Which one is, which one of your favorite shots out of everything you've done with Secession? There's two that come to mind from this season. Um, one of which got some nice press coverage, um, which was the stillness of the three shot holding the three siblings when Kendall had collapsed into the dirt. Um, uh, and I was able to, to do what I'd said I was gonna do, which was um, it, it, when we'd found the location, which was to find this still three shot, which also took advantage of this 
beautiful kind of uh, graphic perspective of the old building behind it and the dust blowing up and the wind blowing through it. That was really satisfying, lovely moment because that's what we set out to do. There was a, br a brilliant moment for me right at the start of that season when Logan is stuck in um, um, Sarajevo at the airport and um, Pat, um, Pat the DP had had this idea about um, about seeing him gazing out, contemplating his future, uh, and getting this reflection in the in the glass of the airport of uh, across the road uh, with a, with an aircraft taken off, and, and uh, which was really tricky to achieve. Um, but he worked out a way to do it, um, and I loved it. I, I loved it because it was a really clever technical achievement, but also because in in terms of actually when I look at the shot. Um, it just tells me so much about Logan's state of mind. So it was, a, it was that beautiful confluence of the, a, a shot that is beautiful aesthetically, but it was also a, a illustrative of that character at, at that time. So it's just great visual storytelling. Um, those two I'm really proud of. Um, there were other moments that I love because, because of their visual power, which is much more to do with performance. The last shot of season two, Brian's character with his enigmatic smile uh, at the end of season two to, to his son's um, uh, uh, betrayal of him in the in the press conference. I love Brian's performance and that I love the way the camera moves in. I think we that just camera and performance it's very simple classic shot um, on a track in Dolly and but um, it just summed up the moment in, in, in to me a very potent way. Um, I love the scene sequence at the end of season one um that the last scene with the car crashing into the lake and uh and that whole sequence of you know, uh, unremitting pain for for for, for kendall and the, the whole aftermath of the, the again the combination of camera staging and brilliant performance from jeremy i'm very proud of that sequence um i could probably go on but i better stop there <laughs> I mean, you should go on. I mean, there's so many different scenes and different uh, elements that we could talk about in terms of um, your work. I can tell you the one thing that stands in my mind, and I often have been curious about it, and I wanted to save it for the moment we chatted, and here we are. This is where we're going to wrap after this. Um, how did you make the decisions that you did that led to the staging and how you shot the final moments of the previous season? Because everything in that scene, from my point of view, is so deliberate, and so meticulously placed. I have to imagine you had to have like a, like a, like a chart or some sort of battle plan going into that particular moment. Do you mean um, the end of season two? I'm, I'm talking about the betrayal with Tom. Oh, right. Yes, at the end of season three. Sorry. Um, yeah, the um, the lead up to it. I mean, you know, for a start, as as with everything on Succession, really, it starts with brilliant writing, with Jesse Armstrong's writing. Um, that that's what gives you the roadmap everywhere. And uh, you know, one of the first conversations we'd had before even the writer's room convened for season three, um, Jesse had this idea that we that the season would work towards that moment. That would be the final moment in the way that we knew going into season two that the final moment would be Kendall turning on his father. Um, so, um, so, so we knew that was coming down the pike and we were working towards that um, and laying track for that and laying little Easter egg clues for that. If, uh, if you look at a scene at the very beginning of the previous episode, the, I think episode eight it was called, um, the the second the yeah second last episode um, in season three, you'll see in the opening scene in, in Logan's office that Tom is in a position of new power. Just if you just look at his status in the room, he never says anything, um, but but he's right next to Logan and he's there and he has a new power. He's been accruing power um, and. Uh, throughout the season so so when it comes to the when we do our job right uh, that plot twist or that story beat should feel both incredibly surprising and also 
almost obvious, almost of course inevitable, um, and uh, and and tracking Matthew and and Sarah's relationship um, inevitably had to lead to this moment. Um, in terms of the specifics of of shooting that moment, um, it was very deliberate in my head in terms of the staging and even the choice of the location for this slightly kind of Godfather-esque seeing through the doorway uh, for the moment when Sarah's character would see the hand on the shoulder from Logan to Tom. Up until that moment, uh, uh, and then as Matthew came into the room, the three siblings huddling together in an echo of the previous scene, um, that was all deliberate, uh, 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 as much as we get deliberate. The, the, the issue on the Denver script was very clear that, that that would be the end of the season, Sarah's character realizing that, that Tom had betrayed her. What was really tricky um, was was how to cut the moment to cut to black. Um, in season two, it was it was there for us. It was there's the enigmatic smile from Logan. Bam, end of season. Um, here it was not. Um, I, I felt it would be at a specific moment when when Snooky's character um, saw that moment, but but it wasn't feeling right it didn't feel it felt to that 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 it felt almost it felt manipulative and soap opera-esque um we needed something more um so we did what we always do and that's to work the problem and uh, um, part of working the problem simply involves me not saying cut um because the actors will continue to act and will continue the scene beyond the script um because that's what that's the way we work and we worked it in different takes and tried to uh, uh, and it wasn't working to keep sarah kind of upstage if you like what so so we asked at a certain point for sarah to break downstage towards camera and that's when we got the moment sarah so basically walked into her own close-up matthew naturally in the moment followed her and that gave us that contrast that gave us the moment the the brew that was thick enough to cut from um because we the audience had the voyeurism of seeing what tom could not um the on the one hand she's saying she, she's fine she's fine but we can see that the the hurt the pain the rage everything in her eyes uh, and that was such a beautiful moment that we that was just evolved between us because that's the way we work